Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and welcome to another Mortal Kombat 11 video. Now in today's history of breakdown and analysis, I'll be talking about the telekinetic blind swordsman Kenshi Takahashi, seeing as I did talk about his son last week. Now for this history of episode, I'll be breaking down everything from his debut in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance all the way up to Mortal Kombat 11 and what has supposedly happened with the character, because there's a severe lack of references to Kenshi in that game when it comes to verbal intro dialogues. So we will be talking about his possible fate in Mortal Kombat 11. Now without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now Kenshi is a descendant of the Takahashi clan, a well-renowned bloodline from Earthrealm that was known to house many talented fighters. And Kenshi is obviously one of these individuals. So when Kenshi was born, he grew up with a great amount of pride in his heart. However, despite his lineage, Kenshi wished to surpass his predecessors and thus traveled throughout Earthrealm fighting anyone he could come across, as he wished to become legend and spread the Takahashi name once more. Now inevitably as he went from town to town victorious, he came across an extremely old man named Song. Now Song was extremely interested in the young boy, as his skills were nothing short of incredible and he saw great potential in the warrior. So the old man would reach out to him, saying that a great fighter needs a great weapon. So Song would tell him the legend of an ancient sword known as Sento, but like within a well. So with Kenshi intrigued by this story, Old Man Song would lead him to the well that housed this amazing weapon. Now without a second thought, Kenshi opened the well, excited to receive his prize. But upon doing this, the top of the well would explode with hundreds of souls, catching Kenshi's face and blinding him. Now he would crawl over to Song for assistance, but instead he found someone else. You see, Old Man Song never actually existed. This was simply a facade that the cruel Shang Tsung had put on, as the sorcerer was only interested about the souls that lied within the well. So after Kenshi blinded himself, he would drain the sustenance from them, and it turns out that these souls that lied in the well were in fact the souls of Kenshi's ancestors. So it definitely does add insult to injury. Now with one more cruel act, Shang Tsung would take the blind man and drop him within the well, wishing for regret and despair to take him. Now out of chance or luck, when Kenshi was sitting at the bottom of that well, he heard a voice call out to him, but he was unsure of what it was, at least up until he got a grasp of it. You see, the sorcerer didn't completely lie to Kenshi, although he deceived him into opening the well. The story behind the sword sitting at the bottom of the well was in fact true, and that is what Kenshi had found. He'd found Sento, so once he picked it up, Sento would become his eyes, allowing him to finally escape the well. Now once he had regained his senses, Kenshi wanted nothing more than to hunt down Shang Tsung and kill the sorcerer for what he'd done to him. Now for the next decade, Kenshi would refine his skills and work alongside the special forces, as they said they would give him the opportunity to track down Shang Tsung. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance Now Kenshi does appear much later in the original timeline, making his debut in the fifth game of the main series. Now before Shang Tsung and Quan Chi kill Liu Kang and Shao Kahn, Kenshi is given the mission of travelling to Outworld to track down a lost special forces operative. That being Cyrax. He came across many interesting individuals, but none could hold a candle to Ermac. You see, Ermac at this point in time was still under the control of Shao Kahn, but due to Shao Kahn's defeat in the third game, Ermac had somewhat lost purpose in his life and was mindlessly wandering outworld. So out of pity, Kenshi would sever his mental ties to Shao Kahn. For the first time in Ermac's life, he was able to do whatever he wished. Now, as a form of gratitude for the blind swordsman, Ermac Mac would teach Kenshi a telekinetic move, that's being known as a telekinetic slam, and with that the two decided to part ways, but Omak was in eternal gratitude for what Kenshi had done to him. Now despite Kenshi spending a considerable amount of time in Outworld looking for Cyrax, he soon came across a deadly alliance and learned about their plan. Now Kenshi would try his best to contact the special forces in order to warn them that the red dragons were working with the deadly alliance and that they had planted a bomb in their facility. Now unfortunately for Kenshi, 
Kenshi here. He's unable to contact his peers. And you see the Deadly Alliance were well aware of what he was trying to do. So whilst he was worried about the current events, he would be blindsided by Movado. So with Kenshi taken off guard, he was quickly defeated by the Red Dragon member, Mortal Kombat Deception. Now luckily for Kenshi, his unconscious body would be found by the Linkway Grandmaster, Sub-Zero. Now as a form of gratitude for Sub-Zero's kindness, he would forge an alliance with the Cryomancer, and together the two would set out in the hopes of finding a portal that would allow Kenshi to return back home. Now as they continued to journey through Outworld, the pair had caught word about Raiden's defeat at the hands of the Deadly Alliance, the execution of Earthrealm's defenders, and finally the return of the Dragon King Onaga. Now when Shang Tsung was seemingly killed when Raiden exploded, Kenshi's ancestors returned back to his sword, giving him immense power and enhancing his already incredible capabilities. Now whilst on their journey, the pair would be attacked by Hutaru, and Sub-Zero was temporarily blinded during this fight. But luckily for Kenshi, he no longer had to worry about using his eyes, and was able to fight him off. Now Sub-Zero thanked him for what he'd done, so the two actually formed a very strong bond and relationship, with Sub-Zero even offering him the opportunity to join the Lin Kuei. But Kenshi decided to decline, as you see Kenshi preferred to be a lone warrior, so he did in fact sever his ties to the special forces. Mortal Kombat Armageddon Now when Kenshi returned back to Earthrealm, he decided to take on his own personal mission of hunting down those who preyed on the weak and those who were known to corrupt the pure. And Kenshi was extremely successful on his personal mission, taking down several different massive criminal organisations. Now eventually he came across some information from the Red Dragons, as apparently they were in possession of a half Edenian god known as Taven. Now when he was approached by Johnny Cage, Kenshi dismisses Johnny Cage's invitation for the Battle of Armageddon, as he does not wish to be involved in a fight between these two sides, being far too focused on his main objective of tracking down and destroying the Red Dragons. But before he could go on his next mission, he would be given a premonition by Sento about the quest that Taven and Dagon were on, and how this would actually lead to the end of their world. So realising that this was it, Kenshi decides to join the forces of light during the Battle of Armageddon. Now Kenshi is one of the few individuals to climb rather high up the Pyramid of Argus, even slaying the likes of Shiva. But inevitably when he's nearing the top, he's confronted by Quan Chi and is seemingly defeated by him. Now luckily for Kenshi, his friend and ally Ermac would assist him by throwing Quan Chi off the top of the pyramid. But things weren't exactly as they seem, as Ermac stomps and crushes Kenshi. You see, this was not Ermac. It was, in fact, Shang Tsung at work once again. So this is how Kenshi perishes in the original timeline. Now, in the reboot in Mortal Kombat 9, the timeline is somewhat reset to the first tournament, and many of the events that happen in the original timeline are, in fact, altered here, due to the vague message known as he must win. So Sindel's massacre, in fact, never happened in the original timeline. Now, one of the many and different alterations to this timeline is the fact that Kenshi actually appears much earlier than in the original, as he is in fact DLC for MK9, and does appear as a character on the main roster for Mortal Kombat X. Now due to Kenshi being DLC for MK9, he's not actually intertwined to the main story. However, after Shao Kahn's defeat at the end of MK9, and with Earthrealm seriously lacking any defenders, he decides to join the Special Forces, working under them in the hopes of restoring order to Earthrealm. Now despite Shao Kahn being defeated, the peace would not at all last long, as the fallen elder god known as Shinnok would attack with his Brotherhood of Shadow, and with Quan Chi and Earthrealm's former defenders by his side, he was able to lead a massive siege across Earthrealm, killing many as he wished to corrupt the Jinsei Chamber. Now Kenshi and his special forces raided the Jinsei Chamber, attacking and defeating many of the Revenants. Now eventually, Johnny, Sonya and Kenshi were able to make it through to the Jinsei Chamber, but before Kenshi was able to attack, he would quickly be knocked out by Shinnok. Now luckily for the special forces, Johnny with some assistance from his heritage was able to defeat Shinnok and seal him within his amulet once more. So in the end they were victorious. Now after this point, Kenshi would continue to work with the special forces and although the details are rather vague, we know that Kenshi was assigned the mission of infiltrating the Red Dragon organization and posing as a simple henchman in order to learn more information about them. Now whilst working under the Red Dragons, he met a woman in Thailand by the 
name of Su Chin, and the two eventually fell in love with each other and conceived a child, that's being Takeda. Now due to the nature of Kenshi's job, as much as he would have personally liked to have been there for his son, he knew that the best thing he could do was keep his distance. But despite his very cautious nature, his cover was eventually blown and Su Chin's home would be attacked. Now when Kenshi arrived at the scene, he unfortunately found Su Chin dead. However, he could not at all find Takeda, but when he found Su Chin's mother, he was able to track down where Takeda was. Now unfortunately for Kenshi, when he found Takeda, Red Dragons were also able to catch up to him. So Kenshi knew that there was only one place he could go where it would be safe, and that was Shirarayu ground. Now Kenshi ran as fast as he could with Takeda on his back, and luckily for him, he was able to make it onto Shirarayu grounds just in time. But Su Hao was unaware of this, and continued to beat him to a bloody pulp. It's here where Hanzo Hasashi appears, and kills Su Hao by punching him through the face. Now Hanzo would take Kenshi and his son to the Shirarayu temple, and Kenshi would explain to him the matter at hand. Now the reason why Hanzo and Kenshi are actually on good terms is that after a special forces attack on Quan Chi's fortress, a handful of revenants were freed of Quan Chi's control, and Hanzo was one of these individuals. Now Hanzo, after being released from Quan Chi's control, was guilt-ridden. He'd felt ashamed for the actions he'd done under the sorcerer's control, but it was Kenshi that helped rehabilitate Hanzo and allow him to accept his sins so he could progress as a person. Now Hanzo was in his debt, and with Kenshi knowing how dangerous his current situation was, asked Hanzo to take in his son Takeda, as he wished for him to raise his son so that when he was older, the two could take down the red dragons together. Now Kenshi at this point still maintained his very distant relationship to Takeda, and Takeda himself did not trust Kenshi, so the two did part ways on rather bitter terms. Now after this point, Kenshi does remain rather absent in the comic book series. As you see, whilst Havoc is putting his plan together, Kenshi is currently in Pakistan, tracking down and killing any red dragons he's able to find, as it seems like now he's devoted his life, tracking them down and killing them all. Now Kenshi makes one final and very brief appearance at the very end of the comic book series. It's a little bit of a stinger, but it does not go anywhere. You see, after Havoc's defeat, an armless Gora would track down Kenshi and beat him down. Upon doing this, he would take him as a bargaining chip to the Red Dragon. As you see, due to Goro having his arm severed by Kotal Khan, he wanted to grow new ones, and he was well aware that the Red Dragons worshipped the Dragon King Onaga. So by using Kenshi as a bargaining chip, he would hope that by working with them, he could regain his arms, and later the Shokun throne. Mortal Kombat X. Now no details are actually disclosed about what happened with Kenshi after these events. As you see, he simply just appears in Mortal Kombat X, with no details about how he escaped the Red Dragons, so we can only presume that he just luckily managed to get away from them. Now a bit of time would pass by, and Kenshi caught word from Hanzo that Takeda would be participating in the Chujin exams, and that his chances of acquiring this title were extremely high. Now after realising that Takeda was finally ready, Kenshi would travel out to his exams and watch as he successfully defeated Hanzo. Now when Kenshi tried to talk to his son, Takeda was not having any of it, as he understandably blamed him for his mother's death and he hated how Kenshi abandoned him as a child. So the two would fight and Kenshi would be defeated by his son. Luckily for Kenshi, just before Takeda could deal the finishing blow, Hanzo told him to restrain himself, as he should listen to what his father has to say. And it's here where Kenshi reveals to him how he's been fighting the red dragons the entire time, and that he put him under Hanzo's training so he could become strong, and that one day the two of them could go after the red dragons. At this point as well, he does reveal to Takeda that their family is telepathic. Now the two are successful in forming a relationship, and over time the bitterness does disappear, as Takeda enrolls into the special forces and later joins Cassie's team. Now from this point onwards, Kenshi doesn't play a really big role in the story, as early on he is seen as a form of support for Takeda, as his team did recently fail a mission at the Lin Kuei Temple. Now whilst Cassie's team is in Outworld trying to track down Shinnok's amulet, Kenshi Jax and Serena travel to the Neverrealm. As you see, they wish to capture Quan Chi and figure out a way for him to release the other Revenant. So when the Necromancer attempts to return back to his fortress, he is ambushed by the special forces, and Ken Chi does lead the charge. Luckily for them, despite the Revenant's sheer power, they are successful in defeating them and capturing Quan Chi. But nothing is quite that easy. As you see, when they bring Quan Chi back to their special forces base, they would be confronted by Hanzo Hasashi. You see, he wanted Quan Chi's head for everything he'd done to him, the massacre of the Shirarayu, and tricking him into
into becoming his slave. Now the special forces at this point do not want to give him away, as they do wish to release the revenants from his control, but Kenshi's words fall on deaf ears. As Hanzo is blinded by his rage at this time, so his Shira Ryu army would attack, and despite Sonya's, Johnny's and Kenshi's efforts, they are all defeated and Quan Chi is killed by Hanzo Hisashi, but not before he's able to release Shinnok. Now before the special forces are even able to attack Shinnok, he quickly blasts all of them down, taking Johnny Cage to the Sky Temple as he still wishes to corrupt the Jinsei Chamber. Now the final time we do see Kenshi in the Mortal Kombat story is when Katty's team arrives at the special forces base and they help everyone who is knocked down. So Kenshi does not appear at the very very end of the story mode. Now regardless of this, Shinnok is defeated by Cassie Cage, so we do get a bit of a sweet ending. But what's rather intriguing here is that when Mortal Kombat 11 has rolled out, Kenshi has seemingly disappeared alongside his son Takeda, and although the details have not been disclosed, it has been insinuated through their arcade ladder endings that the pair are finally going off to track down the Red Dragons to kill Dagon for what they'd done to Su Chin. So the details are rather scarce of what exactly has happened here. On top of that, Kenji's body can be found in the crypt, where he has seemingly been slain by Aoni, but the continuity of the crypt is questionable at best, so I wouldn't take his seeming demise in the crypt as something that's solid in stone. But yeah guys, that's actually it for the history of Kenshi. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned more by doing so. Kenshi is my personal favourite character from the 3D era, so I'm very happy that they did reincorporate him much earlier into the new rebooted timeline. But in saying that, I can't lie, I'm quite sad that none of the Takahashis made it into MK11, so I am crossing my fingers that in the future at some point, we may hopefully have them come back as DLC, because I'm a massive fan of both Takeda and Kenshi. But yeah guys, that basically wraps up everything I did want to say in this video. I do wish to apologise for the lack of uploads recently, but I've been wanting to take my time with actually making these videos, and I have been pretty busy outside of making content. But in also saying that, next week I do have some really exciting stuff to actually let you know about what's going on with the channel, and some stuff I'll be doing on the side that does impact it. But yeah guys, that's actually it for this video. So before it wraps up, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. So by giving it a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. And also do not forget to tick that bell, as it will notify you when I do upload a video. But yeah guys, as always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I will see you all next time.